Guys, I have to be honest with you. For my remake of Smino's Wild Irish Roses, I actually didn't do it from scratch. I used the eye filter loop as the beginning as the basis for the lead. I mean, I did the drums and the bass myself, but the lead was all the original. And I'm sorry for betraying you like that. I just, I hope that you can find it in your hearts to forgive me for that. The lead was difficult to reverse engineer. Money said... So niggas be like, how you make that Wild Irish Rose sound? I just did it right there. I don't have Omnisphere, so I use Serum. Yeah, that's right. That uh, BST that you use for making beats for Yeet. I'm spinning on these perks like I'm a laundromat. See you in every day. Oscillator A, I use the BSOD square waveform with seven voices, 0.05 detune, blend knob at 82, and WT position knob all the way to the right with the level at 70%. Oscillator B, I use the basic MDC waveform, one octave above, six voices, 0.02 detune, blend knob at 75, volume around 70% as well. The filter is an MG low pass 24 dB with oscillator A and B routed to it, the cutoff at 147 hertz, and the resonant at half. The first envelope has an attack of 304 milliseconds, sustain at 0, 0.0 dB, the decay is one second, and the release is 722 milliseconds. The second envelope has an attack of 961 milliseconds, no decay, a sustain of 0.0, .0 dB, a release of 671 milliseconds, and that's routed to the cutoff, with the cutoff value being 28. And this is what gives it that swell effect. The LFO is on off mode, set to BPM with the rate being 132, the rise being 1 eighth, and it's routed to the fine pitch of both oscillators. The first one's value being 63 and the second one being 50. This is what gives it that sort of tremolo effect. For the effects, I put on an EQ with a low pass filter on it with the cutoff being 657 hertz, the Q being 58% and the gain being 1.7 dB. There's also a compressor with the threshold being at negative 33.1 decibels, ratio of 2 to 1, an attack of 132.8 milliseconds, and a decay of 90 milliseconds, a gain of 5.3 dB, and the mix at 100. And this is so that the sound is more level. And then uh, the master volume is at about 75%. Then what I did was I recorded a one shot of the lead. I played it at C, and then I opened it up in the fruity sampler. For the volume envelope, I put a hold at 100%, sustain at 39%, and a release at 15%. I put a low pass filter times 2 preset on there. I turned the mod X knob all the way to 0% and put the mod Y knob at 52%. And then for the mod X envelope, I put the amount to 65%, the attack to 32%, the hold at 30%, the decay at 46%. The sustain at 39 and the release at 30%. Then, for effects, I put Fruity Chorus on it, the Light HF preset, and put on an EQ with the low end cutoff at 72 Hz. Alright, so for the chords, the first chord is an E-flat major 7, the second is a D7 chord, and the third chord is a G minor 7. The next three chords are an F minor 9th, a G7 chord, and a G minor over C, and that progression loops throughout the song. There are a few other melodic sounds. There's this basic high pass square wave sound that comes in at the end of every four bars that plays C, D on the fourth bar, and then F, G, D on the eighth bar. There's the sound that comes in sometimes that 
kind of sounds like an iPhone being plugged in. So what I did was I got two sine waves, one an octave higher with a slide attack in some release and I played a quick G minor followed by a D sharp note and that got me pretty close to that sound. For the drums, all of these drums are from the Monty Booker kit, so they're the exact drums that he used. Minus one thing, but I'll get to that later. Go buy that kit, because it's a great kit for making these types of selection beats, but I mean, it's also just a great kit in general that I use constantly. The kick and a snare follow a four bar loop that goes like this. with a variation every 16th bar that goes like this. There's a tom that comes in a little before the fourth beat of every third bar. And this sound effect that I made by mashing three sounds together, a glass sound, a wooden perk, and a creak noise pan to the left that comes in on the second beat of every fourth bar. Also, there's like this reverse sound effect that comes in right here. The hat and the shaker are playing a really swung pattern and another hat comes in every fourth bar and does this. And every 15th bar, there's this triplet pattern that the main hat does. So the bass. The bass is a citrus preset called sub bass. I just tweaked the first oscillator by turning its shape up 35% and the tension knob to 39% and enable declicking on both oscillators. Now the actual bass line is played live throughout the song. So it's off time plus there's variation and really short notes that give it that live feel. There's also a lot of sly notes that add to that authenticity, but I really think that the bass line to this song is a really good way to study how to make your basses sound authentic.